A couple of things to chat about here. We have a couple of questions that we're supposed to be considering over the next half an hour, if that. Yeah, about a half an hour. Um, I'm Melissa Shern, by the way, and I have to facilitate this conversation. It's nice to be here with you all. I know many of you, yeah. but. Um, District Yeah, yeah District Yeah, do you want to just introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Monica, a couple of words right here. Great. Come on, come on. Where's this wastewater? Grab some chairs. Only and... right, but that's where we should go. Nice. <laughs> yeah, well, you're in deep wastewater now. Yeah, come on over, grab a chair. We thought it was a smaller group, so we were just, you know, circling up here. Um, so just smush in and pop the door, because it is That's why. It's hot in here, and it's hot outside, but not as hot as right here. Do we want to slide in another table? It's totally up to you. I'm trying to imagine the students' um, feet. Yes, it is. All day. Yeah, one thing I do want to do is try to remember where they are. So we have an island there. Right. Okay, so while we're organizing the room, um, I'm just going to help get us started here. Uh, we have a couple of questions. What advice does this group want to give to the commission saying these are the things we need to be looking into for wastewater? Can you clarify when you say the commission or the community, what is this body? Yeah, the, the, all I know is, the, is what this says okay, that here, that is that there is going to be a Montpelier Commission for Recovery and Resilience that they're going to take um, you know, that you can apply to be on by September 14th, and there's going to be some initial committee members, um, and if everyone doesn't have this, it looks like there's going to be a group of like three to five to start, so a, re a representative of Montpelier Alive, the Montpelier Foundation, and the city of Montpelier, and then this group will start to build out a commission looking at these top five things that we just prioritized and then bringing in other topics. So if we're thinking about uh, advising this body, what do we, what questions do we have for them, or what advice do we have for them as they form? And if you could please state your name before. Okay. And we're taking some notes over here. Sure. So I'm Elvira, E-L-B-I-R-A, uh, and I, based on some of the previous forum conversations, the advice I would have is to um, provide information in layman's terms to the public about uh, steps that have been taken about the of the wastewater treatment facility, of the general system of the town. Uh, based on comments that I heard, I think there's a lot of mis, dis, or uninformation, mm -hmm. um, where people feel that certain actions have not been taken, whereas in fact they may be in process. Um, and so I think just providing a, a status report mm -hmm. of the current situation but also highlighting efforts that are currently underway or projected into the future and that you know may be on the horizon next year, two years from now, five years from now, um, would be very helpful. That's not work for the commission, but I think it's very important for public understanding of this key priority. So what's the state of the state as it, as, yep. as it pertains to the status of the wastewater treatment facility and um, flooding and um, resilience. Great. That will help set the baseline. What else? And Kurt is here from the city and he can help absorb this information as well as these notes. Yeah. Oh, well, I just have a basic question. This, um, um, my understanding from talking to one of the wastewater technicians was that the plant didn't flood and it operated as intended. I mean, that they still were releasing untreated water, I mean, untreated sewage into the river because they didn't have the capacity to treat it. So, you know, I, I just have a basic question about um, is it like what's, a, what's the problem we're trying to solve? Um, and, and what we're doing with, with her about the, the education about how it 
uh, worse conditions in and we, as taxpayers we've just spent a ton of money to upgrade. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and you can certainly speak to this. The way I think about the problem as defined by the conversation and, and previous ones, it's that we want to protect the wastewater treatment facility from being inundated with water to the point that it can no longer function for our city during flooding. Um, would you say that that is? Yeah, so we didn't flood, but it was really close. So really if we close. had a bigger event, we would have So is it, is it just water. volume of water or is it the threat of all that silt and everything else coming in and we had a serious flow? Yeah, so we did have a lot of impacts from silt. So we went through the collection system, it basically cleaned out all the pipes and then ended up at the plant. So all the tanks were so all the pumps were seizing up because they couldn't pump because there's so much silt in a, at the plant. Um, so but how, well, how long did it take you to clean all that stuff? We're still working on it. So we're doing one tank at a time, pumping them down. Um, mm -hmm. So so you really didn't escape. Well, there wasn't catastrophic damage, right? So none of the major, not major equipment got So damaged. what, what would be a catastrophic? So um, in a previous flood, uh, the water actually it was it was that green or the one before that, in the same year, uh, water came up sort of through the, the pipe from the river, and there was a manhole cover that wasn't secured, and the, oh, the whole plant flooded and like electrical. And you know, all the equipment was damaged in the park design for the time. So to clarify, you were talking about the effect of the additional water flowing through the treatment system. Right. And from the in, pipes. But the, the, the catastrophic event would be water that's not being processed through the system, but is like breaching the system. And, yeah. and so I think there was discussion about raising the perimeter or some other methods to prevent um, that. So you need, you need good, like dikes around the Well, that's what we're talking place. about. I mean, that's right. what we're talking about. That's one idea. Other ideas that I've heard have been to turn to Dog River fields there and forest that area and create, uh, you know, or create like floodplain. Just not use it, not mow it, and just let it, you know, grow up so it can absorb more water. Perhaps plant some trees there. Um, you know, what are other ideas though, in terms of, I mean, the, you either have to do a natural or an engineering solution, but we got to get the water away, or maybe we do upstream solutions around the Dog River to allow upstream some more um, buyouts or things for the water. Just one, one more sort. clarifying thing. So during the heavy rainfall, the problems you were having was literally from the rain itself being so much that you had more water than you could deal with. Um, so the, the plant is designed for four million gallons a day, and we were having about ten million gallons a day through the facility. Because yeah, rain was getting into mammals, because the streets were underwater, so there's you know, a massive amount of flow coming through the pipes. Um, so what we did, well, we were partially treated, but we had to pull like a disinfection system out of the channels so they didn't get damaged during the flood. So there's these lights UV disinfection that we pulled because they're like Wash the waves are so much velocity running through the plant. Uh, the speed of the water is just to the point where it's going to damage equipment. So that's why we have a boil notice? So that's the water, potable water system, the drinking water system, just separate from the wastewater. So in this case, wastewater is being discharged yeah, into the river. Right? Yeah. Right. This discharges to the Munsky River as opposed to the water system starts up in Merlin through a different set of pipes. Okay, so that had, we had to go through a boil situation because Berlin, there was a problem with that. There wasn't actually a, a, any known issue with the water system. The state recommended that we issue a precautionary water warning just in case there was contamination we didn't know about. Like seeping into the pipes. Right. Yeah, Which really, yeah. yeah, that would be possible if there had been a break in the pipe. Right. Um, what other thoughts or questions um, or you know, areas do you think that this commission should be looking into as it pertains to wastewater? Oh, Meredith, I mean, I'm not familiar. Um, a number of years ago, I went on a tour of the wastewater treatment plant that was extremely educational. And I would suggest that that be promoted as just an educational and awareness to our the taxpayers of Montpelier because that really, um, 
helped me realize what was going into the system. And one thing that was stressed during that tour was these um, disposable, supposedly disposable wipes that were clogging up our pipes and our equipment. And that if they just stopped using that, that would actually save taxpayer money. And, and I just thought that was something that everybody should know about. Um, so what you were saying about just education, just letting us know what the status is, is so important, especially as a taxpayer. And, you know, I, I approved, I voted for the upgrades because I could see that it was really necessary. Yeah, apparently there's more upgrades that are needed. I don't know if we have money for it yet, but um, yeah, it's so important to um, protect that infrastructure. You know, I don't know all the ins and outs, but I know it's important to protect it. And I think the Dog River idea of having like a settling area, a floodplain area, I mean, it makes total sense. I mean, if you just look down from the highway of the plant and you see this field that's being used as grass and dog poop, a lot of dog poop out there, I mean, it's really important to have that grown up and lots of plants, lots of trees, willows, whatever, that could really help. Mm -hmm. And the tree board could help in planting those trees. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, one other idea could also be to look at, um, I'm sure we're not the first community that's had to deal with this, but to look at other ways wastewater facilities have been protected um, in other parts of the state or in other states. Like, I don't know, do they have like a floodgate that they put down in front of certain areas? Are there like, you know, retain, like what's the storm water look like in the area? Um, you know, I just would look at other models that come up. And I think you wanted to say something too. Well, I mean, it's just a continuation of, I, mean, I think we were asked to suggest what the commission should do. Yeah. But I think that Part of that is promoting the engagement of the community in the system, the engagement and understanding. Mm -hmm. um, in education. Because, yeah. for example, like the separation of stormwater, like I understand that's in process, it's a very slow process of separating the storm and the sewer water. Yeah. It's underway, it's land, it's going, but it can't so all be generation. accomplished in one day. Yeah. Yeah. But it has a very okay. significant correlation to like the flow of water and other tools that can be used in situation um, right so I think you know tours of, of the plant like right. elementary school education so sort of some buy into this infrastructure so that people understand what it is when we're talking about it and that there would be community support around the decision making process to protect um, the systems in general mm -hmm. um, so that's not really well I mean it's really like bringing the public into mm -hmm. The process, um, which is challenging when the city already provides like extensive notes, notifications. Um, there are websites, there are updates. There's tons of information there, but enticing people to use it is. <laughs> It's not really a hot it's, topic in no, and of itself. This is probably the hottest it's ever been is in this very moment. But yeah. you know, it's it's really important. Like if that had been inundated with water, it would have been terrible for it would have been, if it is such a, a big How close problem. are we to separating the, the two systems? I mean, like a see, tw twenty years or something. Right? Seems like it's been half of it's working on for the last thirty years. Yeah, yeah that's that's been been well, we didn't get money in bond. We're doing like one pipe at a time. Right. Yeah. There are two major, well, we're doing State Street right now, it's a separation project, so I'm sort of, and East State Street is in the sign. Those are the, and those are the kind of the last two um, big ones, other than Cliff Street, which is really difficult because of all the But that'll make a real big difference to everyone. Yeah, it's a massive amount of water. It's going into the water. Yeah. So, will that water go into the Winooski directly then? Well, yeah, well, there is pre treatment requirements now in some water, so at least some level of treatment. Uh, uh, vortex separators. It's like a, a silt separator to take out some of the solids before it goes through. Mm -hmm. But it won't be treated to the level that it is at the plant. Yeah. So it won't get the gasoline and all the toxins that are in the, on the roads. So right. It's much less. Much less. Yeah. That's sad. 
So one other thing we're supposed to be looking at, we're supposed to be considering in this conversation are just what resources do we think will be needed as they, as the commission considers these issues? Um, maybe this is an answer to that, but I think um, somewhere in this paragraph it talks about general risk assessment. And I would think that would be a good point good place to start. Yeah, um, the state of the state and the risk assessment yes, together. I mean, Right. You know, that's that already knowledge resource. Yeah. Do we have a risk assessment around flooding in the wastewater plant already? Yeah. So when we did the last upgrade, um, we had to go through the flood plain permitting process, and basically all the equipment that was replaced was um, evaluated for being able to elevate it or flood proof it. There is a flood with a submarine door um, on one of the access to lower access doors. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know that a formal flood risk assessment has been done, but the project included a lot of flood proofing components. So one thing would be to look at that as a resource mm -hmm. in doing any type of risk assessment. Yes. Yeah. So we're not redoing any of the work. Um, what about um, like that settling pond that's out in the, the, um, the um, parking lot by the insurance company? There's like these ponds. They're not ponds. They're just areas, low areas where the water goes into and then it gets absorbed slowly. What about looking at that, at that kind of thing all over the city, trying to build more of those things for the storm water runoff? Mm -hmm. Settling ponds or storm water? Whatever runoff. they're called. They're in little, yeah, they're like little yeah. gardens, wet gardens. Right. Like one by BSECU, there's, there's a really nice one right there. What about building more of those around the city? Yeah, I think that's a question of like, can we remove some of the concrete, which is really the worst. You it's know, the worst. And then yeah. and replace it with some more green spaces. Or green pavement that has holes in it so it goes down and yeah. the soil. It's just so, allowing more of the water to get into the ground. Yeah. And not just run all over the yeah. place. Yeah. That's right. Pretty that's a good point. Yeah. There's also um, hazard mitigation grant programs. So the city is and doing a scoping study right now to elevate the river road to HMGP to see if it's an eligible project. Um, so that has basically acts as a levy right now. It's a, it's a wall that protects the plant. And it was, you know, in the last two big floods, it was like the most over there. Oh, really? Oh. So one of the things the city's looking at already is just, is there a way to elevate that? You know, how, how does that impact the floodway? Um, yeah, so expand or elevate. Right. Yeah. yeah. Really raising the elevation. Okay. It does create Cover. a whole thing on the city. You're looking down on the highway at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so that's one thing that's already in the works. Yeah. And, then, and that's a resource that grant program deals with open protection. And I guess one question I would just have there is in if we are raising up the you know that road and having that wall act as levy, does then it um, does it then cause worse flooding yeah. for downtown? Because anywhere, or just under, or somewhere else, I don't downstream. know. Like downstream, yeah, I guess that would be the question. Because the Dog River flows not river flows the other direction. Is that? Uh, no, they come together just upstream. Yeah, they come yeah. right, right. So then, as coming right there, yeah, if yeah, I remember right, right. Yeah, right, yeah, right there. Right so, I'd say that with just kind of the lay of the land there and, and where the ledge starts and stops, the if the road acted as a levee to protect. It would protect also our, our public works facility where all our trucks and vehicles are parked, which are mm -hmm. also critical access assets. Mm -hmm. But it, it's really a fairly small piece of kind of a horseshoe shaped piece of real estate. So we wouldn't be taking away that much floodplain by creating that levy. And I, I for one, am really, and my name's Chris, I work in the city in different capacity, um, sustainability and facilities coordinator, uh, director of public works. But I, I'm in support of, in addition to allowing the floodplain to, to do its job, also having an engineering solution that, and, and, and an engineering solution to me provides the benefit of being built to a fixed elevation, where the, both of these two events that, that almost overtopped and inundated the, the plant were, my understanding is, almost exactly the elevation of a 100 year flood, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we know the elevation that we're at right now, and 
to plan ahead if we go a couple feet higher or three feet higher or whatever. We're, we've got a fixed elevation, but the, the expanding the floodplain, it's hard to quantify what what effect that's going to have on on how the flood waters interact with our treatment plan. Well, someone can do it, and that would be a question um, it, uh, for you know a river engineer or a wetlands person or something also like that. Also, mitigate downstream impact by removing the volume of soil that's on certain elements and blocks from the moment before. Right, so right. Or is there that a field and create the same volume that you're displacing and raising the river? Uh huh. Yeah. So, so what are the trade-offs there to get the water in somewhere else, if not that spot? But I think one thing. Um, are we have money as a state and the, the feds for buyouts too so are there also properties that were flooded that we should be buying out upstream to, to you know mitigate impacts downstream from the dock river yeah know? from yeah. the dock yeah, yeah. I, I mean i would say the same thing is true for any of the rivers right. honestly but um because all three are challenges for us um but uh but i'm just specifically talking about other thoughts? Well, it's interesting because, you know, if you look at this paragraph, in a way, action has already been taken or is in process on nearly every point. You know, the city should act now to improve defenses. They're evaluating the possibility to raise the road, which also touches on funding agencies, right? Accessing funds that could potentially uh, support that activity, uh, risk assessment mentioned in the last round of upgrades, there was an aspect of risk assessment there. Uh, the capital improvement plan, the facility itself seems not to be lacking in its capacity. Is that correct? I mean, this is about pr protecting its ability to operate, but it's operating according to plan. And um, contingency plan should the facility fail during a future flood. Yeah, event. what is that plan? And Did it sounds chance? like you talked about, you know, you enacted some of these plans already, removing some of the treatment apparatus to prevent loss, shifting flow of the water, releasing some untreated water to protect the facility, uh, but also, you know, go to some more mental. So that's part of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, in a way, I almost wonder, like, how can we be helpful when so much is, is underway already? Is there anything we're forget? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I should I should pass this around because this is a if you want to be if you want to continue this conversation as the commission is pulled together, if you would like to either be notified or you know. Um, pulled in to the conversation, you should sign up here just on wastewater. Um, there'll be other opportunities too, but this this sign up sheet would be given to the commission. So feel free to pass it around or sign up if you want to continue to be engaged. I, I think it should be noted that um, the plant provides a regional resource. So mm -hmm. I think it's about a third of every septic system in the state, um, as well as in some New Hampshire and other states. All go from one day. And at the time, people that are not on a municipal system, they thought they think of, most of them all of central and parts of northern and southern are all going to be one day. Is that an income stream for it us? It is an income stream, uh, but it's also a regional service. There's not a lot of plants that are set up. And it's also service. Wind River. Yeah. Yeah. Wind River is one of the contractors that does the work. So they bring waste to us. So if, if the plant went down, there would be an impact, not just a month later, but for months as a whole. Mm -hmm. Maybe the only thing we can bring that's really actionable and vital is that public engagement and education. Well, and strategies around protecting it from the water getting to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, which I think we have a bunch that we've listed, like, you know, levees, additional green spaces, buyouts, you know, um, flood doors or gates. Um, if you have a dike, a road dike, around there, the only place that your water is going to come from is just the river directly on it, or some of those storm uh, 
stormwater systems that haven't been disconnected yet. We did have water in from kind of the facility from the street drainage that plugged. Mm -hmm. So that's a backup. So it, it, it kind of it wouldn't it couldn't get to the river, so it started running into the plant. Oh, well, that's something something to add to the list then. Look mm -hmm. at yeah. that drainage system and make sure there's like an alternate route or like there's some where else if that happens that it's not coming right. Like right. is there a right. detour for it somewhere? Probably, probably hard to quantify, but also building floor drains after the after the water level rises above those floor drains that may or may not be connected to say the very right that are allowing storm water into the yeah throughout the city right we've right. done yeah. roof drain studies um, there's the, the collection system is made out of clay pipes primarily and then no gaskets so anytime the groundwater comes up it gets into the sewer system and those are big infrastructure issues that we're dealing with that sticks like that yeah. What about on-site store? Like, so if you have the levy and you deal with this, like, backup issue that we were just talking about, you know, you have this horseshoe-shaped property that's just there, does it also need to have, I guess, on-site stormwater um, for anything that's just coming straight down onto it to be managed? Like, we get nine inches in eight hours of rain or something, do you need on-site stormwater that you don't have currently? So all the storm system within the plant facility runs through the plant in case there's a spill okay. or something that's required. Okay. Okay. Has, has the um, wastewater treatment plant contacted other communities? Like, you know, I don't know what Waterbury did during their big hurricanes. And, I mean, they were out for a long time in the past. I mean, there must be other solutions and other communities in Vermont that successful have, have they looked into any of these other communities and how they've dealt with this i mean we can't be the only one that's happening i don't i have not reached out to the communities um, you know we're we're um, building a lot of things but, um but yeah that's a good idea so, so going on sort of what Alyssa said um if you had a whole bunch of rain the nine inches in eight hours if you had a a sort of big stormwater drain right somewhere is in the low part point of the place to go to the river. Couldn't you get rid of some of your ex excess water that's theoretically not bad? I mean, except for it flows over a little bit of ground there, and it just goes out of the plant. Um, yeah, potentially. I mean, um, we would have to have it like a, some sort of valve where you. We flipped it from going through the plant because that's a regulatory requirement to have any spills contained and treated. So you'd have to, during a flood event, you know, change the valve over to divert the water to a different direction. But it's certainly possible. In terms of size and scale, again, off, off the top of your head, uh, what other communities have a similar sort of scope and scale of these water treatment facilities? There can't be that many. Yeah, various cities, the closest. Um, uh, Northfield, um, St. Malfoy, I think, did get impacted by the flood. Um, the water 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 water. Water. I'm not sure. Waterberries worked for 10 years since Irene to do something with culverts and so forth to divert. And they, I read in the paper that it, it didn't. It had some impact this past, but not like I mean, it. They did stuff for 10 years. It took them 10 years to get things that are a little bit better for them, I think. Because so I've been to Waterbury recently, and I mean, it, it, it looks so much better than Montpelier. <laughs> and remember, Irene was really bad in, Montpelier, in Waterbury. Right. It was, it was terrible. Um, well, thank you for taking the time to have this conversation. We're going back to the big group.